on the program, the Executive Director of West Virginians for Affordable Health Care. Dr. Ice, good morning to you. You have the absolute best villain name of any guest we have ever had on the show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me back, and thank you for recognizing that. Yes, you need to be in a Marvel comic strip or on the big screen very soon. Yes. Yeah. My kids think so, too. Yeah, that is totally awesome. Best name ever. Uh, hey, let's talk uh, about the West Virginia legislature and some legislation that the Senate uh, has considered and the House as well, HB 3274, the Affordable Medicaid Buy-In Bill, and the Senate has a chance to pass this, too. Can you tell us more about this bill and how close it might be to passage? Yeah. Um, let me start by saying how excited we were on Saturday to... Uh, see the House pass this through and send it over to the Senate. So we're hoping the Senate takes the, the same steps to get this passed in, and on the governor's desk before the end of session. But um, let me, I'll first address the problem that, that we believe that this type of legislation can address. Um, in West Virginia, we have a significant number of, of folks who rely on the Medicaid program for their health care. Um, a lot of times these folks have to make the rational decision, should they work more hours, increase their wages, take a promotion, anything like that, and risk losing their health care because we have this thing called a Medicaid cliff. So once you make a dollar more than the, the program's um, allowances as far as income, you're dropped from it and you have no health care anymore. So that's one issue it's addressing. Another it's addressing is what we call churn. And that is when um, folks, particularly those who work seasonal jobs, are, um, and that could be, you know, in the tourism industry, that could be construction, any of those types of, of places where some months they might qualify for Medicaid coverage and other months they don't qualify. So they're on and off of the program. Um, so really this is, is to reduce churn and to reduce our um, health care costs for low-income workers in the state of West Virginia. And it would do it by providing a program that pulls down federal dollars. So this would cost West Virginia no money, but it would bring in 14 to 17 million in federal health care spending is our estimate. Um, and then they can have this continuity where they, you know, earn more wages, but they don't have to worry about losing their health care and they can build their way to the private market, say. So, um, they can enter this program and keep keep raising their wages, keep bettering their, their economic position, but not have to worry about that continuity of health care coverage. Very good. And uh, maybe taking on added importance now that uh, March has started, those extra SNAP benefits that have been sent by the uh, federal government have expired as well, creating more of a financial crunch for these folks. Yeah, there's there's a lot of um, financial crunches happening right now. You know, the SNAP benefits, um, we're, we're looking at, you know, record inflation over the last year, especially. And just all of these make it more difficult for West Virginia families to get ahead. Um, we shouldn't have health care add to that burden. Matt Miller. Dr. Ice, you mentioned the 14 to $17 million that it would come from the federal government, a federal program. Is that a new program that they have introduced or just something that West Virginia is now getting on board with? It's, it's Actually, it, it comes from the Affordable Care Act itself as an option for states to pursue um, as a way to pull down additional money. So we get money for, for health care in the form of um, a Medicaid match for the Medicaid program or uh, premium tax credits for the the marketplace and the, the private insurance like that. And this, this is just another um, program that we can apply to the federal government for and pull those, those dollars into our state. As the numbers get crunched, is that enough that would handle any raise in in uh, fees and cost for this new cliff, or or could it still potentially cost more? In fact, uh, we our our estimates are that it would um, come at no cost to the state. 
meaning those 14 to 17 million dollars would cover would that cover the cost of the program correct outstanding matt harvey thank you dr ice is there any downside to this bill or this potential fix you know um I wish it would go higher in income, but that's that's not practical. But that's just me wanting everybody to help have health care coverage. Um, I think that we always see opposition um, in a democratic process. But so far, there's not been very loud opposition. There's been actually a, a lot of support. I think um, our, our uh, House delegates, at least um, on both sides of the aisle, saw the value in this as a as a program to help working West Virginians increase their economic power. As someone who probably works regularly with West Virginia DHHR, do you have an opinion on uh, potential reorganization of that agency? You know, we were in always concerned about when they changed the administrative structure, um, but we have been really good partners with DHHR and if they're going to go ahead and do this split we will work with them and and make sure it's going well and help where we can. Dr. Nice, I'd like to go back to you, you mentioned the income threshold being increased and you would love to see it increased even more so that more people have that opportunity for health care. As you look at the bill, how different is it? What is that new income level before that cliff might come? Yeah, let me, um, I'll give you an example here. Um, just for a single West Virginian who's working. Right now, a single West Virginian who is working can qualify for the Medicaid program up to 138% of the federal poverty level. So that's $18,754 for a single person. Say for a, a two parents and a kid, that number would be 31781 What this would do, and it's not Medicaid, um, we call it the buy-in program because really it's a bridge between Medicaid and the private market insurance. And it would cover folks up to 200% of the federal poverty level. So that gap in between when they drop off of Medicaid or the Medicaid cliff, up to 200%. So for that single person, now they can um, make a little over $27,000 a year and still qualify for this affordable program. Um, that family of three can make a little over $46,000 and still get um, help in that bridge between Medicaid and private insurance. And that certainly sounds like a good thing. I mean, we want our families and we want our folks in West Virginia to be striving, as you mentioned earlier, you know, to not have to make those decisions. Well, do I work more? Or do I take this promotion and lose my health care? Or do I just kind of stay where I am so that I know I have that safety net under me? So it's good news. Yeah, in a lot of ways, it's both a, a health coverage program and a jobs program. Dr. Jessica Ice, our guest, Executive Director for West Virginians for Affordable Health Care. And again, this is a bill that has already passed through the House, 73 to 19. It was HB 3274. The Senate companion bill is SB 610. And Dr. Ice, what are you hearing out of the Senate in regards to the odds that this bill gets passed? We are, we've got really high hopes that the Senate Health and Human Resources Committee will be putting um, the, the House bill uh, onto, um, onto their, their calendar, uh, hopefully this week. Uh, we think it's a good, no-nonsense, win-win-win bill for West Virginians. So um, we look forward to seeing it on the, the Senate Health and Human Resources Committee agenda in the next couple of days. And, if, and again, this is basically federal flow-through dollars. It wouldn't cost West Virginia any money, correct? Correct. I mean, we can't really see a downside to it. Well, seems like a no-brainer. We'll see. But I've thought these things yes. before. So. <laughs> well, uh, any, it, any. it could be unpredictable, but we, we think this is a, a really good bill that addresses a very real problem for West Virginians. Yeah, I, you know, I know that it's the federal government that sets the poverty level as to when you can get assistance or not, but $18,754 for an individual who's not living with his or her parents or someone else who's footing the rent bill 
Uh, I mean, I, I don't even know where you can rent in the Eastern Panhandle for for any amount of money that would even cover the take-home pay on that after taxes. That's that's an incredibly low yeah. amount of money. It certainly is. Um, and, you know, we're all, we're a little disappointed with the federal poverty levels because we know they're, it's not accurate. Um, but, you know, that's a that's a big fight at the federal level to, to adjust those. And so we work yeah. within the, the realm we've got here. And, um, yeah, because... It is. Could you live on $18,000 a year? I don't know. I that don't, would be tough. I don't think so. It, well, especially depending on where you live. I mean, if, you, if you're living around here in a higher cost area, the answer is no. You, right. be, you better have a lot sure. of roommates or a sympathetic parent. Uh, Jessica Ice, the Dr. Ice, thank you so much. Appreciate your time this morning. Any final thoughts? Um, just if anybody wants, uh, they can call their, their senator and um, say, you know, this, this is a good policy, makes sense for West Virginia working um, families and even individuals. And if anybody wants more information, they can always go to our website is wvahc.org. Thank you, Dr. Ice. We do appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for having me. Have a great day.